What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about several different ways to create different walls inside of your SketchUp models. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by PlusSpec. PlusSpec is a powerful extension for SketchUp specifically designed for professional designers and builders. PlusSpec automates not only the design process, but also layers, textures, shadows, scenes, and much more. Everything you draw in PlusSpec is parametric, giving you the freedom to make changes to anything in your model at any time. Additionally, PlusSpec allows you to create priced material takeoffs and 2D plans. Learning is easy with inbuilt tutorials that allow you to create 3D models and 2D plans instantly. If you're looking for more information about PlusSpec, you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash PlusSpec. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. There are a bunch of different ways to draw walls inside of SketchUp, ranging from very simple to much more complex. And you can also model walls with varying levels of uh, um, varying levels of detail. So sometimes you want to model things like all the framing in the walls. Sometimes you just want like a rectangular wall indicating where a wall is going to be. So I'm going to go through a bunch of different options for different things you can do to create walls inside of SketchUp. So to start off, we have probably the simplest way to create a wall in SketchUp, and that's simply to take the space that you want to create a wall around. So like this one, for example, and use the offset tool. So all that all that you have to do in this case is just select this face and then tap the F key to activate the offset tool then you can single click and you can offset this to whatever your thickness of your wall is going to be so in this case let's say that it's going to be a four inch wall and uh, so what you would do is you would offset this in four inches you would just push pull this up using the push pull tool in order to push pull it to the height that you want note that when you do this when you activate the push pull tool you tap the P key and then you want to single click on this wall you don't want to click and drag because you usually want to give your walls a specific height Height. So in this case, let's say it's 10 feet. So you want to make sure you single click with the push pull tool active and then type in your value and hit the enter key so that you can add a precise height. So another way that you could do this, and generally I don't do this, though I have done it with Profile Builder lately, um, just in order to create an estimate. But um, another way you could do this is you could also draw the profile of your wall. So let's say I wanted this to be 12 feet high and I wanted this to be a four inch wall. Well, what you could do is you could select the face of this object and then activate the follow me tool and use the follow me tool to extrude a wall all the way along this path as well. So it's just kind of a different way to get to where we were at. I almost always use this other way, but this is kind of an alternative way if for whatever reason you have issues with this one over here. So another way that you can create walls is let's say that you want to get a little bit more detailed. So let's say you wanted to, for example, model your wall framing. What you could do is you could model your um, base plate and then model your framing in using the move tool in copy mode. So the way we would do that is instead of offsetting this by um, four inches, and we'll go ahead and call this four inches, and push pulling it up to the height of the wall, for this one, what we want to do is we want to push pull this up only to the height of what your uh, what your board is going to be or what your base is going to be. Um, so what we would do here, and I would probably double click on this and put it in a group just because otherwise you're going to have to deal with geometry, merging, and everything like that. But I would probably go ahead and put this in a group and then I would push pull this to whatever thickness you want. So maybe like one and a half if you've got like a two by four laid down or something like that. And then you could come in here and you could actually model out studs. So you could come in here and you could draw this stud and we'll say this is gonna be 10 feet high. We'll make it the thickness of our wall. And then we'll push pull it to one and a half inches. What you could do is you could take this stud and you could triple click on it and you could make it a component and you could um, make this something like two by four wall stud. So you could create a component with this and then you could use the move tool in copy mode in order to create copies. So let's say for example that this wall needed to be framed at 16 inches on center. What I could do is I could select this wall, tap the M key to activate the move tool and I could click on this point and then I could tap the control key in order to turn on copy mode. And then I could set a distance of 16 inches 
Um, so I just typed in 16 and hit the enter key. And note that I haven't clicked on anything else yet, but now I can type in a number of copies. So I can type in times, and let's say this is gonna have 20 copies. I would type in 20 and hit the enter key. You can see how this wasn't enough of these wood studs. So without clicking on anything else, I could just type in a new value. So I could say times 30, that's gonna be too many. So I'd go back and I'd do times, maybe like 25 or 26. And then we could um, just use the move tool in copy mode to create these copies really quickly. And for this last, last one, we could just move this over here. Well, now we've modeled out the framing on one side of our wall. We could use the move tool in copy mode to copy that the same way that we did that before. Whoops. So, and then you could do the same thing on the other side. So probably what I would do here is I would just use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a rotated copy. And I'd move this over and I'd just do the same thing. So copies at 16 inches on center times 10, maybe times 15. And then maybe for this one, you just have an additional two by four in here. And then same deal where you could use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy these across as well. So you can see how you can use the array function um, of the move tool in order to create copies in order to do this really quickly. And then if you wanted a top plate, you could just copy this up in the same way. So you can see how you can use that function to create as many copies as you want and add in framing really quickly. Um, you'd probably have to cut in some openings and things like that, but you can see how you can manually model out this framing really quickly. So another way that you can add walls in, and this is a way that I've seen Michael Brightman do this in his drawings, is where before what we had done is if we draw a wall in like this one, so Let's say this is four inches again, 10 feet high. So instead of modeling the whole thing out like we did before, what you could do is the problem with modeling this out um, the way that we did it before where we do the whole perimeter is it kind of leaves you in a little bit of a tough spot with your uh, interior walls um, because you know you don't really have guides for where those are going to go and you have to come back in here and draw these well if you wanted to what you could do is you could draw this profile and push pull it and then you could tap the control key with the push pull tool activated and you um, that's what's called create new face mode so you can see how in normal push pull mode it moves this face well if I tap the control key what it'll do is it'll create a new face in here so what I could do is I could push pull that out by four inches and I could just keep using create new face mode in order to build out this wall with these walls already separated and ready to go. And so this allows you to prep your faces for the creation of your interior walls as you go. Not only can you model out walls manually, which works great depending on what you're trying to do, there's also a number of different extensions available that will also help you create walls. So the first one I wanna talk about is a free extension and it's called 1001 Bit Tools and I will link to all of these extensions in the note down below. But what this one does is this will actually come in here and this will create walls based on um, based on thicknesses and heights that you dictate. So like, let's say for example, on this one, I wanted this to be a six inch wall. It's gonna be 10 feet high. So all you have to do is add those thicknesses and heights. Now you can come in here and you can just click and you can add these walls in here. Whoops. You're gonna want your height to be 10 feet, not 10 inches. You can see how you can just come in here and you can just click on these different edges to really quickly add this wall in here. So if you don't wanna deal with uh, the offset tool or anything like that, you can see how this'll add that six inch wall to whatever height you want, wherever you click. And the nice thing about this tool is it also has some additional things built into it, like the ability to create openings in these walls. So if I take this for example, and let's say I wanted a four foot by four foot opening, 
you can add that opening in a wall that you've created with this extension. So adding these window openings and things like that gets really easy. And it's a little bit tricky moving them around. So if you wanted to move this window, for example, you'd have to come in here and manually select this geometry of the opening and move that around that way. But you can definitely adjust those after the fact. So this is a good kind of like starter extension for different things for building houses and things like that. So another extension you could use um, in order to create walls inside of your models is Profile Builder. And so I've done a bunch of tutorials on Profile Builder before. I will link to one on actually creating a wall assembly. But basically the way this extension works is it creates smart profiles and smart assemblies. And so what this allows you to do is this allows you to create different assemblies inside of your models. So let's see if I can find one. So like for example, this is a wall that I've built and what it does is it creates a bottom plate, a top plate, some different framing and some sheathing and adds them all in as part of an assembly. So you can see how I can bring this in and I can use this to create a wall that actually generates all of those different things. And if we look at it closely, you're gonna notice that this wall contains not only a number of groups, but it also contains different groups for like uh, your drywall sheathing on the outside or the plywood sheathing on the outside. So you can see how it's creating all of those different things because I've custom built this assembly in order to do that. So you can take Profile Builder and you can set it up to really quickly add those different things in here. And you can add as many things in here as you want. Um, so Profile Builder is great for creating, repeating things like this. The other thing you can do with Profile Builder if you have the extension Quantifier is you can apply cost to this and you can also figure out quantities. So you could figure out total counts of these pieces of wood as well as total length of your top and bottom plates and other things like that. You could also get areas of your different walls. So um, this is great for creating smart profiles and it works for other things as well. The only issue I have with this in this uh, so the one thing that this doesn't do super well is creating openings and holes, but um, it kind of makes up for that in its ability to create other things like walls along terrain. And so Profile Builder is a, is a great extension for creating those different walls. So there's an extension from Nathaniel Medik called Medik Wall. And what this one does is this is a much more scientific way of approaching your walls. Um, this one is actually in here where you can set everything from your, st your stud spacing to your number of top plates, the kind of uh, sheathing that goes on the outside of it. You can really adjust just about anything having to do with the framing and construction of a wall using this extension. You can set this to uh, either do the actual framing or not. So if you wanted this to, if you wanted to, you could have this just generate the wall or you could have it actually generate everything including sheathing, siding, things like that. So you can see how this creates really detailed walls and the nice thing about this extension is it allows you to come in here and allows you to do things like drawing doors and other openings. So I can come in here and I can actually add a door inside of this wall and this will adjust the framing to kind of match that. And I believe you can adjust the way the headers and things like that look in here as well. So you can also use this to create different windows. So like if I wanted to add a window opening here here and here you can see how this will actually update your framing inside of your model to show that and in addition if you look at this from a plan view it labels this um, so it gives you information about these different things as well so this is great for wall creation you can see how it gives you information about the window size and everything else in a plan view so this is a really robust wall creation tool so you can come back in here and you can edit these walls as well. So let's say you had this wall in here and you decided that you wanted this framing to be different. So let's say you wanted your stud spacing to be 12 inches on center. You could just click in here and update this and you can see how this is gonna live update your framing. So this creates really detailed walls um, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a very accurate wall creation extension. So the last extension I want to talk about is an extension called Plus Spec. And what Plus Spec does is Plus Spec is more of a full featured BIM extension for SketchUp. So what it does is it creates smart 
assemblies inside of your model. So it's more than just a wall creation tool, it creates other things in here as well. Um, but what this one allows you to do is it allows you to come in here and set different kinds of walls. So, you know, let's say you wanted your wall to be masonry, you could set that that way. You can set it so that it has a masonry veneer in here. You can set it with all these different kinds of walls and all of those parts and pieces are gonna be adjustable. So you can adjust your stud spacing in here. You can adjust the kind of studs that are gonna be in here. Um, all of that is editable inside a plus spec, as well as the kinds of finishes and things that are gonna go on the outside. So you can adjust different brick types. You can set what kind of jip board this is gonna put in here and the thickness of that. Um, different hardwares and flashings and things like that. So it's a very detailed extension. It'll put all of these on layers for you. And so once you set all of those different things, you can see how you can come in here and you can actually model these walls out. So I could set this to like 40 feet long by 25 feet long. So you can use this to draw your walls in and then once you draw your walls in you can see how it draws this wall in at the proper thickness including things like your um, air gap in here um, for your hardware and also for your drainage it draws in your interior framing and things like that and then once you do that you can come in here and you can add things like different windows so I could add a window so I could select this wall and I can add a window really wherever I want inside of this wall. You can see how there's a whole bunch of different options. So I can come in here and I can set this to whatever width that I want. So you can see how this one is truly more of a BIM extension. So this one comes in here and adds like um, different sills and things like that. So you can come in here and you can get really detailed with that. And then in addition to that, once you're done with all of those things, you can come in here and you can generate scenes really quickly. And so what you can do is you can select different view sets and plan sets um, and have this actually automatically generate all of those different views. So right now these walls aren't showing up with framing or anything like that. But if I was to click the submit button right here, and so you can come in here and you can set up with the scene tool, you can use this tool to automatically create those different views. So within plus spec, what you can do is you can use this to show your structure. You can use it to show your structure with sheathing, or you can use it to show just your walls or things like that, as well as generating plan views that you can use to uh, create your architectural plans in layout really quickly. So you can see how this automatically created a floor plan view in here that you could export to layout. So these all vary in cost and complexity, but they're all great tools for creating different walls inside of your SketchUp model. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you use any of these methods? What's your favorite? Or did I leave anything off this list? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.